Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie Brinkerhoff with Hair and Makeup by Steph, and I'm here with Kenra Professional today, and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do this very ethereal bridal braid. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to want to do is make her roots feel a little bit dirtier, make them a little bit more gritty. I'm going to do that with the Kenra Volume Dry Shampoo. I'm just gonna spray this all throughout the roots, and that's gonna make it easier to work with and give it more volume. You'll notice here in the back, that I have clipped in some extensions just for length and for thickness. You don't have to do that. If you are going to add extensions for this type of a braid, I would recommend only doing them back here. You want to add your extensions only where you want your thickness and your length and then leave the rest of it alone so you can get that volume and that wispiness. One thing I like to do when I'm doing a bridal braid, in order to make each braid unique and different, I like to save the top for last. So essentially what I'm going to do is section out from the ears and up and leave that for later. So I'll start with the bulk of my braid down here and then I'm gonna use all of this for my detailing and to make it unique and you know make it creative from there. So I'm gonna get this sectioned out. I'm going to use this section in the back to create the bulk of my braid. So I'm gonna start at the nape and just add some nice beachy waves to this using a one inch curling wand. And I'm going to add a little bit of back combing at the roots as well to give me even more texture. As I'm curling, in order to get some good flexible hold, I'm gonna use the Kenra Platinum Diamond Deflex Spray. I'm going to just mist this from roots to ends and then curl with my one inch wand. This is a very buildable spray. It has a lot of flexibility to it and it's good for layering. So it's a really good working spray. All right, you'll notice too, as I was curling, I was curling everything in towards the center in the back. It's much easier to curl in the direction that it's going to go rather than curling the opposite way and then trying to fight against it. So anytime I'm doing anything down the back, I always curl away from the face towards the center in the back. Now I'm going to start on the bulk of my braid. And before I begin, I'm just running my fingers through this and I'm going to add some of the Kenra Platinum Working Wax 15. Kenra Platinum Working Wax is a really good creamy wax for smoothing away frizz and taming flyaways, especially around the hairline. Because this is all going into a braid, I really want these sections to look nice and smooth. So I'm focusing on those and then working it through the ends. I'm going to start with just a basic topsy tail braid. So very simple, you're just going to grab one piece from each side and bring them together in the center. And as I'm doing this, I have my comb in my hand to smooth out anything that's looking matted. It's very important to get the texture how you want it before you get it in the elastics instead of trying to fight with it after. I'm gonna add a little bit more of my wax. Once that's looking smooth, I'll get these in an elastic here in the center. And I don't wanna wrap this too tightly. I'll only do it two or three times depending on how thick their hair is. If you do it too tight, then it's really difficult to maneuver it afterwards. So then I'll just flip this inside out and then softly pull on these to loosen them a little bit. How much you pull on these sections depends on how big you want this to get and how much you want it to look like a braid or more of just like cascading curls. So I want this to definitely look like a braid. So I am going to pull these out, but I'm not going to do too much. Okay, now I'm gonna repeat that same thing right below it. One piece from each side, a little bit more pomade. Okay, and as I'm working down, I'm going to have her look down. What this is going to do is help so that the braid doesn't poke out from the neck too much. So I'm gonna have her look down so I can make sure this is laying nice and flat along her neck. Okay, then flip that inside out. 
and pull on these sections. If your elastics are showing in between these sections, there's a couple things you can do. Either you can, before you move on, you can go back to this elastic and pull it down slightly. So I'm just lowering it a little bit so it's sitting more behind this section. Or if that doesn't work, you can also scrunch up the one beneath it, make it a little bit tighter to blend those together. I'm going to do that one more time and then we're going to switch up our technique a little bit. Now I'm going to switch up the braid a little bit. So I'm gonna start by putting the rest of the hair in an elastic, just in the same spot, so it's all gathered together. And then what I'm going to do is I wanna hide this elastic. An easy way to do that is to pick up a small section and I'm just going to loop this back through the elastic. I'll put my fingers through here and then I'm just going to pull this back through and then spread this out so it hides my elastic. So this is going to break up the braid a little bit and also hide my elastic at the same time. And then from there, I'm going to continue doing my inside out topsy tail braid. So I'm going to come down here, add another elastic, split that in half and flip it inside out. And then I will hide this elastic in the same way. Now I'm ready to move to the top half. The first step is going to be just getting it back combed and curled with the Kenra Platinum Diamond Deflex Spray, same way that I did in the back. Her natural hair is pretty fine and silky. If ever I'm working with hair like that, I either curl with the wand or with the flat iron. Very rarely with the curling iron. The reason that the wand curls are typically the best for fine hair is because they add the most volume to the hair because you're not smoothing the hair through an iron as you go. So they work really well on fine hair. Flat iron curls also work really well on fine hair because they stay in so well. It's almost like you're curling a ribbon. The tension plus the heat just makes a curl that stays in all day. So those are definitely the two tools that I use the most when working with fine hair. Now I'm just going to break these up with my fingers and spray some of the Kenra Perfect Medium Spray 13 through the ends. And this is going to help control frizz and give it a little bit more separation. Now what I'm going to do is two rope braids, one going down each side. So I'm just going to divide the hair in half. And we will start with this side over here. I've got a little bit more of the platinum working wax on my fingers to help smooth out the frizz at her roots. I'm going to start right up here by her hairline and I'm starting fairly small and I'm going to divide this in half and then you just twist the front piece over top of the back piece. Now I'm only gonna add hair to this front section. So I'll pick up a row
Get a little bit more wax on my fingers. So those two combine and they cross over the back section. So I'm going to repeat that process, wrapping all the way around to the back. All right, once I reach the center here in the back, I'm just going to clip this aside for later and repeat the same thing on the opposite side. So you'll notice that as I'm doing this rope braid, I'm smoothing each and every section. So I'm either applying more of the platinum working wax or I'm combing through it. It's very important that you get rid of your frizz and your flyaways before you get everything done. If you can see them now, then you're going to be able to see them at the end and it's really hard to get rid of them once everything's already pinned. So I'm really taking my time smoothing each section so I don't have to worry about it later. Now I'm going to start pancaking these and detailing them. I'm also going to pull up on the crown a little bit, give it a little bit more volume. And then I'm just softly pulling on each of these sections to make them a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. As you're doing this, you want to be really careful to hold it very loosely in this hand. If you're gripping this too tight, you're gonna go to pull on this and it's gonna create a lot more frizz. You want it to be able to slip very easily through your fingers. So I'm barely holding on to it. It also helps a lot if you start at the bottom and work your way up. Essentially what you're doing is taking this extra length and you're turning it into bulk. So it helps to start down here and then work your way up. Now I'm going to combine these two pieces together into one big, regular three strand braid. So I'm just going to take the two sections that I have, split them into three, and start braiding down the center here in the back. I have my two sections and each of them are divided in half. So I'm just going to combine the two middle ones into one piece. So now I have three sections and from there, I'm going to just start a regular three strand braid. Now I'm going to get this pancaked. Sometimes what I'll do as well, if I'm wanting to do even more dramatic pancaking with both of my hands, is I'll use a claw clip to clip the bottom. I like to do this instead of like a flat clip or something that's too tight because it still has a little bit of wiggle room in there. So now I can use both hands to pancake this even more. I'm going to start pinning all of this in place. I'm gonna start up here with my twist. Just get these pinned to the scalp. I also like to hide a couple pins throughout as well, just for extra security. If I'm ever hiding a pin in a braid, I like to go in the center of the braid instead of on the edges. It's a lot easier to hide them that way. I'm going to take this braid and I don't want to hide everything down here so I'm going to tuck it through right before this elastic so I'm going to poke my fingers through here and just pull that through so a good tip for securing this in place is Instead of inserting bobby pins just into hair, 
I'm going to insert them into this elastic. So I'm gonna grab the hair that I just weaved through, grab part of that, and then push this up through the elastic. That's going to make it a lot more secure than just pinning into hair. Now for these ends, because she doesn't have a ton left, I'm just going to curl them and leave them loose. If she still had really thick hair at this point, you could tuck them through the elastic one more time down here. But I kind of like how they're looking. I'm just going to add a little bit of curl to them and leave them loose. There is our completed look, a very ethereal and beautiful bridal braid.